Alright folks, today we're taking a look at the MFJ461 code reader and the MFJ557 Morse code deluxe oscillator. We're pairing these together because, well, I think they make a good combo. So let's check it out today on K5ATA Ham Radio. Alright, as we get started, if y'all would, do me a favor. Click that like button, click subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified of any of the content we have. And if you're interested in any of the stuff that we have in the shack, um, we have an Amazon link below. We do make a small commission off of that, not much. It doesn't cost you any more, but it kind of helps the station out, and it helps our, out our school club. Also, our Patreon link is below as well. That helps the, the channel out and also helps support our middle school ham radio club that we've got going. So we appreciate that. So let's dig in. If you don't know, I teach middle school, and one of the things that I get to do, I'm fortunate in the district I work in, is I get to teach ham radio to a couple of my classes. So I always kind of look at things through the lens of how will this help new hams learn, and how will kids or new hams take on to this stuff. So what we've got here <clears throat> is the MFJ Pocket CW Reader, turn, turn that around. Okay. and the MFJ Practice Oscillator. Um, just feeling these out of the box, this is stout, man. I mean, it's heavy. It's, it's a real key. It needs a little adjusting there. It's got too much movement in there, but it, that's a real key. Um, and it's stable enough. You can use this as a key. It takes either a 9 volt or you can get an optional 12 volt power supply um, on top. You've got volume and tone controls. And let's see, to adjust this dude, it's this back. To adjust it, it's just this back screw here. That's a little bit better. And the uh, Morse code reader. Now, <clears throat> This, well, both of them really, require a 9-volt battery. So I did have to run out to the store and grab a pack of 9-volts because it seems ham radio stuff uses 9-volts all the time, and I'm always running out of them. So now the uh, practice oscillator will take 9-volt batteries as well. All right, so let's start with the Morse code reader. Just pop that cover off. All right, so to get to the battery on this, we are going to have to take this little cover off here. So let me grab the handy dandy Phillips. Don't lose the screw. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so that comes all the way out. Um, you'll see the guts of this. It's got a little paper. Oops, we're going to hope that paper wasn't really that important there. A little paper is kind of sitting down in there, and that's just to kind of hold up against the battery, I guess, to keep it from flopping around. Not sure why they made that paper, not just like a piece of plastic, but All right, slide that in there. Oh, actually, that is plastic. It just kind of looks like paper. My bad. All right, and then we're going to slide that plastic piece back in here. Yep, and that just kind of wedges that battery in there. Hey, look, we have noise. <clears throat> and then put this back on. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, when you take this off to put the battery in there, be careful because you've obviously got two wires coming out of here. And they are hot glued inside here to help hold it in place better. But you don't particularly want to go yanking on these bad boys. So, unless, of course, you're really keen on practicing your soldering skills. In which case, hey, yank away. Looking forward to having this dude because Morse code is one of those things that I'm in the process of <clears throat> relearning 
been a little busy, hadn't been keeping up with my Long Island CW glasses. Sorry about that, Rob. I'll get back on it. But I want to teach it to the kids, and well, you can teach them to copy code on LCWO or whatever, but you know, it's just not the same if you don't learn how to send it. It's just cool looking. Okay, so we've got the cool little key here. So, uh, so let's play with the, the key first. So like I said, it's the MFJ-557. Hang on, I need a little bit of that lifeblood. It's a good cup of joe. Alright, so we've got volume. Let's see how loud this thing goes. Eh, it gets pretty loud. And let's play with the tone button, or tone dial. I'm a I'm normally a paddle key kind of fella, so <clears throat> my straight key is <laughs> sending is going to be rough. So those of you who are straight key or hammer fist or whatever y'all call yourselves, <clears throat> I apologize. I'll do the best I can. I don't think that was too bad. Okay, so the key, key is nice. I mean, it seems to send well. Let's see if, how high it goes. Ooh, if you really want to drive somebody nuts, just kind of, you know, it stays on, so you can walk around it with it and just kind of make people wonder and melt their eardrums. So, but it seems to me, That's kind of where I like it. Um, that's a little bit short of halfway. So, all right, so here comes the test. Now, the reason I'm pairing these two reviews together is because if you're, if you're going to learn CW, it's one thing to learn to copy it, but it's another thing to learn to be able to send it well. So <clears throat> this is handy for a couple of things. One, I can sit here and send CW from here, and I can see if it's actually going to show up what I think I'm sending. If it doesn't, okay, I got an issue. The other thing is, those first, especially those first contacts that you make um, with CW, it's easy to get overwhelmed and, you know, you get behind a character or two and then you're like, ah, and you've lost your copy of what, you know, whoever's saying. This kind of helps, it's kind of like training wheels on a bicycle, I guess. You can have this, what, you know, Go ahead and have your, your CW contact, and if you do get all, you know, kafarfled and lose your place, boom, you've got this to help you uh, kind of backtrack and see what you missed. So let's see how this bad boy works. All right, turn it on. And when you turn it on, oops, it's upside down. That would usually help. All right, so it says ready and zero words per minute. Okay, so let's see how this works here. Let me... All right, here we go. All righty, well, <clears throat> let's see if I'm supposed to do some kind of magic with that first. You know, uh, typically I don't read these until... Boom, your manual is now online. Okay, so here's what I had to do. This little dude has got a couple of, just, of adjustments under here. Okay, and let me pull that back up so I can see. Okay, so here's the MFJ website, and because all manuals are online, okay, so what I had to do is go take a look, because it was not copying any code in there. So when you get in there, it tells you all the obvious stuff. But then you've got these two little screws or pots right here on the bottom of the battery case. And I'll show you those in a sec. And it tells you here, power on your receiver and tune it to find a clear, well-sent Morse code signal. Now, like I said earlier, my straight, well, my CW skills in general are kind of lacking. My straight key skills are lacking a little bit more. So, anyway, so... It says, if necessary, adjust the input level control so that the lock LED is blinking. Okay, so let me slide this out of the way here so that 
we can take a look because you have a, a lock LED okay and these are the two little pots on the bottom now make sure you're looking at this oriented the right way when you're adjusting them um, with the red power switch facing towards you this bottom one right here that's right ooh, maybe not this bottom one right there is the PLL frequency and the top one is the input level so if I start playing see it's still not blinking um, I was able to get it to start catching some code but I think I need to turn that up a little bit more and I'm not sure if this is just an infinite oh, that's all the way to the, to the side there uh, the t PLL tone it says it's defaulted at 700 now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you before you start twisting on this dude you might want to make a mental note of you know where it is and how many turns you take because you start getting too janky with it well that usually helps <laughs> there we go okay and now it's starting to copy code okay so you've got to adjust those correctly because the way it came out of the box now it, it didn't copy it for me now I assume that you know when you're in fact we'll just try that in a minute I'll try to find some CW on HF there on probably 20 meters this morning okay well I'm gonna refresh that cuz I don't want you to judge me <laughs> all right say that that I didn't have those close enough together or something so it says it's an E and a T If I remember this, oof, I did not. Okay, um, yeah, like I said, sorry, Rob. I'll get back in class. I promise. All right, so the child unit's here. I'm going to turn off the camera because she doesn't have the cool hair like I do, and we're going to have her send some code. All right, kiddo. If you would, I'm going to refresh this so that it's all on you. And to set it right up there near it and send some CW and see if it copies it. Okay, so you see it's not picking that up, and that's kind of what I was you go ahead and stop for a sec. That's kind of what I was wondering is am I going to have to adjust this for every single signal that I get here. So let's try this. Um, let me move in. If you'll just start sending code, I'm going to... Hang on, let me double check, make sure I turn the right one. Remember, facing towards me, the bottom one is the one I want to adjust. So... Alright. Hold it over here so it's in the camera for us here. And we're going to look and see when it starts picking it up go just start sending random code hmm. I wonder if it's just not loud enough it's not perfect yet now MFJ is quick to tell you right up front that it will not copy crappy code their word is sloppy fist which that pretty much is me right now have you ever sent on a straight key why don't we try and just see how it is I'll, I'll refresh this so you don't have my ghetto -ness. all right so let's check her her straight key sending skills but remember if you hold it that just if you kind of hold the whole thing makes it a little easier
Okay, so here's the thing. It seems to, the, the code reader itself seems to pick up code when the speaker is close enough to the microphone to pick it up. Um, I was not able to get it to pick up the code using this reader, but like I said, this it's really kind of awkward because the speaker is on the bottom of this, and the microphone for this is on the side, and it makes it kind of complicated to adjust. So, okay, so I found a CW signal on 14045, and here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to hit listen to it just with this thing kind of near the speaker and see how that goes. Okay, I'll turn that down. Here we go. All right, look at this. Old friend Alan there. pretty cool. Alright, so it did take a little bit of janking with the tone and stuff like that, and honestly, it seems to be, if you get a really good signal, it copies it really well. If you have a lot of, if it's really weak, it, it's going to have a rough time with it. But that was kind of cool. Alright, so with a good solid signal, it's able to copy code off the radio. That's a cool thing. Um, <laughs> that was nice. I was actually listening to that, and it was going much faster than I can comfortably copy. I mean, I don't even have the full 40 characters yet. And, you know, like I said, I haven't exactly been great about making my classes lately. I've just been running around like a chick with my head cut off. But even then, it was cool. When I'd hear things, I'm like, oh, there's a five. Boom. Then the five pops up, you know. Oh, that was a period, and then the period pops up. It was nice to see that, um, to kind of verify, give you a little bit of comfort there. Works well with the, uh, the practice oscillator. This is a great combination for the classroom. I'm going to love having this. But overall, it's a not a bad little setup. You know, I wasn't entirely sure at the beginning about this little dude because you know I did have a little bit of trouble getting it to uh, hear it but it seems once you get these two little pots adjusted right it seems to be okay and even when it was receiving on HF that little microphone can overload so if you find you're getting a bunch of trash you can either just turn the pot down for your level or you can actually slide this a little bit farther away from the speaker and it cleans it up so you know that's kind of the thing. You don't want to overload the speaker, or the microphone, rather. So if you keep that turned down, that helps. But um, pretty cool little setup. Thanks, MFJ, for sending this out. This, this is going to be a great addition to the classroom. It's a great way for somebody who wants to learn how to you know, send and receive Morse code to get comfortable with that. So... Well, I got most of it. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you all on the air. 7-3.